Thanks for your company. The details now. The Western Regional Police Commander, DCOP Redeemer Vincent Dijo, says the command has contacted Interpol to assist them in information on the suspected Nigerian kidnapper. In a press conference this morning, DCOP Dijo implored uh, the public to exercise patience as they explore multiple avenues in finding the girls. This comes as pressure mounts on the police to find the girls who have been missing for five months now. A search conducted around the building where he was recaptured revealed the dress, the headgear of the the headgear and the rubber slippers the third victim wore when she was kidnapped. This clue gave the police a strong belief that the accused is connected to the crime. In addition, he was sent to call on the charges of uh, escaping from lawful custody, causing unlawful damage to the police cells, and resisting arrest. He pleaded not guilty to all the counts, and the trial is ongoing. In all instances where the accused kidnapped the three victims, it was observed that he has struck an acquaintance with the victims for some time. Because the call history shows that he was in constant communication with some of them, all of them before the kidnapping would take place. He promised the first. The accused contacted the victim several times through mobile phone communications. He promised the first and the second victim with jobs, while the, he promised the third victim with a mobile phone. Police have discovered some gadgets from the accused for investigation purposes and has been forwarded to CID contacts for analysis. The accused person earlier made mention of four persons alleged to have been involved in the kidnapping. The police have made strenuous efforts to arrest these suspects from their hideout, proof, but it proves true that we realize that it was, we send you to a house and say the people are here, you go, nobody will be traced. Police have made strenuous efforts to arrest these suspects from the hideout, proof, that police are still vigorously searching for the kidnapped girls. The general public, public is urged to come forward with credible information leading to the rescue of the victims. We are also appealing to the parents of the victim to stay calm as police is working around the clock to rescue the victims. Meanwhile, family of one of the victims is appealing for the president's intervention. Here is the elder sister of 18-year-old Ruth. It's been a month and three weeks since their daughter was taken. And Ruth's mother can hardly keep her emotions to her. It doesn't take much to bring out the tears that you can see. Marsha's in the back. The last person to see me is her neighbor Stacy. Stacy happened to be on her way into town at the same time Ruth left on the 4th of December. Now Ruth was heading towards MTM. She said after finishing Fijai, she wanted to work, to get some exposure. And she had heard of a job at MTM. So she and a friend were going to find out how they could secure this job. She jumped in a taxi with her neighbor but they didn't travel very far. My neighbor's name is Stacy. Stacy, tell me about that last taxi ride that you had with Ruth. Okay. We left home together. She told me she was going to MCN office with a friend to look for a job. And I was also going to the library. So we took the car and then we alighted. She alighted at BU Junction. And I asked her why she didn't go to town straight. She said, her friend said, they, um, she should wait for her at BU Junction so that they all go together. So what did she tell you about her friend? I, Was it a male or a female? I don't know. I just assumed it's one of her classmates, so I didn't really ask about the person. How did she seem? What was her mood like? Was she excited, happy, sad, She scared? was excited about it because she said the person said they were going to pay her 650 CDs. So she was happy about the job. Mm -hmm. 
Did she say anything else about this job? How did she find out about it? Um, she said a friend told her about it, that she, the person knows someone who can help her, so the person was going with her to introduce her to the person mm. to help her get the job. And she got down at BU Junction? Junction, yes. BU Junction is not far from here. No, right? it's not. Is it a popular place? Is it common yes, it's for people a popular to take place. a car from here and get down there? Yes, yeah, it's a popular place. That's um, the junction to um, Takrade Technical University. So it's popular. Yeah. And it's common for people to take a car from here and get down there? Yeah. yeah. So what was the last thing you said to you? We were talking about organizing a party during the Christmas, so we were mostly talking about that and discussing how we were going to organize it. That was the last thing we were talking about. So this was the 4th of December and yes. you were planning a party for Christmas last yes. year? Yes, yes. Did you still have a party? No, we couldn't have the party. Because Ruth is not here? Yes. As for the police, we've said a lot to them. Now my problem is the president of Ghana that he should set his feet up because this thing can even let him lose some votes in the Western region. Because as for me, I'm deciding that not to vote again because in this all, the way with all the things started, by now I'm sure that they have learned what is going on in the Western region. But it seems they are not showing any much concern about the situation. So we are asking if it was to be an, an MP's daughter or even assemblyman or even a police commander or even, let's say, one of the big men, the pastors, like, is that how they're going to treat the, the, the case? Because we just don't understand. We just don't understand. It's been 17 days since you had this guy. We've not able to trace anything from the guy. Whilst his phones are in their custody too. So you and Nigerian coming to our country to do this. Imagine if we were Ghana that we went there, what would they do to us? So you think that it's because you are not politicians or yeah. pastors yeah. or... Um, yeah. rich people. Yeah. That's why your case is not being Yeah, difficult. that's how we see because if it was to be an army officer's daughter, but I'm not sure by now, even the guy would be, be, be dead, just be looking fresh like that. So you had the family and friends of one of the missing girls, Ruth Kwesin. Earlier you had a friend and the one who just spoke is Nanajwa Hare elder sister. We'll be speaking to my colleague Kwesi Yangsin who is currently in Takrade on this beat for us uh, but before that the Supreme Court has in a unanimous decision dismissed the case challenging the construction of the National Cathedral. James Kwabna Bonfet, the plaintiff was against the construction of the religious edifice arguing that Ghana is a secular state and it was therefore wrong for the state to be quote excessively entangled in any religion or religious practice, end quote. However, the government has defended the decision, delivering judgment on the case in court this morning. Uh, the Supreme Court held that the construction of the cathedral is in tune with social and political objectives of the state. My colleague Joseph Akablay joins us on the phone with more. Joseph. Hello, Benny. Uh, tell us more about details of today's ruling. When it's a number of issues, uh, the first is that um, this uh, was a unanimous decision coming from uh, Justices Sophia Adenira, uh, Duche Enini Yabwa, Badipe, Akoto Bampo, uh, Benin, and Mafo South. Now, there were two main issues that the Supreme Court dealt with. The first has to do with interpretation of various portions of the 1992 Constitution, and the second being whether uh, there is a requirement for certain portions of the Constitution to be enforced. Now, on the first issue about the interpretation, one concern that uh, the plaintiff had raised in this particular case was that the Constitution of Ghana requires that organs are treated equally. So by government supporting the Christian religion to put up a national cathedral amounts to some unfair treatment. But on that issue, uh, the Supreme Court pronounced that I mean, the various provisions that they've read are very clear and that in their opinion, it does not require any interpretation. So they turned down a request to pronounce and interpret those provisions. The second thing has to do with the enforcement of the Constitution. The Supreme Court said that uh, they are not in any breach in the law as was being alleged, and that in, that, in their opinion, uh, they rather feel that uh, the Constitution rather urges the government and the state, for that matter, to support religious groups. I just started to explain that government giving land to Christians to construct a national cathedral cannot mean that government has denied other groups uh, the construction of a cathedral. Neither does it mean that people are being forced to subscribe to the Christian religion or are being prevented 
from practicing their own religion. What is important, Ben, is that this also applies to the support that government gives pilgrims of Hajj. Uh, so the Hajj board, you know, has been established. You know that uh, their travel is also subsidized. The school court has equally endorsed that as well, saying that uh, this does not mean that the other groups cannot be represented. The court actually said that it admits that there are other pressing needs of Ghanaians, but uh, they cannot dismiss their religious need also being equally important, and that the government was fulfilling that mandate of promoting the aspirations of Ghanaians to satisfy their freedoms, and mm. that is why uh, they endorsed this particular move by government. So, Joseph, what does this ruling mean to the construction of the cathedral proper? Uh, Deputy Attorney General Goffrey de Boadami uh, tells me that uh, this uh, clearly means that uh, there's nothing barring government currently from going ahead with this construction. So uh, we understand that there are a series of activities that are ongoing. Uh, you know, a fundraising was organized in Ghana. We are told that another will be taking place outside the country. It is ongoing. Uh, the land has already been allocated. Uh, like we know, uh, the demolition we are expected to take place will also uh, come off in line with the present vision of ensuring that the cathedral is built. So in terms of what happens next, uh, the government is going ahead to fulfill its vision of supporting uh, the various religious groups to put up the national cathedral. Joseph, finally, was the plaintiff in court, and what was his reaction to this ruling? Uh, James Kabner Bomte was in court. I've been speaking to uh, his lawyer, Dr. Abdul Basit Bamba, and he says he's happy in the sense that the Supreme Court has, for the first time, pronounced on that relevant uh, portions of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. So he, he believes that uh, the frontiers of Ghana's law has been extended. Thank you very much, Joseph Akable, joining us from court. Now, government says it will investigate why a 120-bed capacity district hospital project at Fomina in the Ashanti region has been left to waste away since 2016. The $175 million project was jointly financed by the government of Ghana, Barclays Bank PLC, London, and a third party, and is expected to com upon completion to deliver some 120 bed for clients who visit the facility. With most of the key equipment already installed, the project has since November 2016 been abandoned. Weeds are what you see when approaching what the people here say has become a disappointment because they were made to believe healthcare delivery in Formina will equal what is being delivered in Accra and other big cities in the country upon completion. With oxygen plants, air conditioners installed and morgue about 90% complete, one wonders why the project has been left to waste away for the past two years. Upon completion, the project, which now sits in an overly weedy environment in the middle of nowhere, would have children, maternity, male and female wards, a pharmacy and an X-ray scan center. It will also have 100 capacity staff bungalows. The Lands and Natural Resources Minister, Asuma Chime, could not fathom why the project has been left to waste away, but assured that he would get his colleague Health Minister, Kwekwajiman Menu to investigate. The project has gone very far, and there is a need to investigate why work is not going on, and to ascertain who is the contractor, and what sort of agreement or contractual relationship that that contractor might have with Ministry of Health and therefore the government. It means that we will have to bring in the Ministry of Health, the minister, for him to furnish us with further and better particulars for us to know who the contractor is, the amount involved, how much has been paid to that particular contractor, how much is left, then we'll move on from that end. In an interview with Joy News, District Chief Executive of Adensi North, where the abandoned project is located, Eric Kwekukusi says he expects the Health Ministry to continue from where the former administration left the project. To refer to capital investment, I went there to meet the man, and he told me he has forwarded everything to Minister of Finance, waiting for financial approval. So that is the stage that we've got into. So we are praying that in no time, Minister of Finance will give us a go-ahead to come back to site. We know at the end of this project, about 500 youth will be employed here.
Even as health care remains paramount for the people of Fomina and its environs, they are also anxiously waiting for the completion to secure part of the about 500 jobs that will be created here. So now we are appealing to the government to come to our aid so that he can complete the project for us. The people of Fomina can only hope that the project will receive the needed attention by government in order for them to easily access health care in the area. Latif Idris reports for Joy News. You're watching Joy News today. Let's go back to that story uh, on hashtag bring back our tardy girls. My colleague Kujo Young Sidney is in Takwade and he's gauging the mood of residents following the assurances coming from the police that they will get to the bottom of the matter. Kujo, tell us how residents are reacting to this latest development. But break, uh, Kujo, if you can hear me, we want to find out from you how residents are reacting to the latest assurance from the police that they will get to the bottom of this kidnapping matter. Now, Bernice, you'll have to forgive the very shaky image. I'm in the car uh, driving through one of these very communities you're asking about. Uh, I'm heading towards the home of the third victim, Priscilla Bintum. Uh, in fact, she is the first to have been abducted all the way back in August. Uh, now, once we get there, we will start to get a measure of how the community is responding to the police's information that they have put out. Now, I spoke to a few of them on the phone while the press conference was going on because they had questions that they wanted us to put to the police commander. They are so convinced that the police are not attaching the same amount of uh, urgency to this investigation as they would have uh, because it is their own uh, loved one who is missing. They think the police has been a bit too slow in, uh, in, in uh, finding evidence. And they also don't understand why the police are prioritizing the case of the jailbreak and the resisting arrest uh, in court over the case of kidnapping. And um, they, 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 they are saying that this means the police uh, do not take the disappearance of their children as seriously as they do. But the police is seeking to reassure them that the police methods are not always uh, information that they can put out in the public domain. So while they can't explain word for word what they are doing step by step, they want the family to be assured that they are actually following procedure. Mm. There is a lot of sophisticated technology that they believe the suspects are using, and they are also working day and night to crack that technology and identify their accomplices who, in their view, form a syndicate of kidnappers working with the suspect who they have in custody today. Indeed, and the police claim or say that these kidnappers are professional. But Kujo, early on, we heard you speak to uh, relatives of some of the families. And in fact, I must apologize for the loss of sound in that particular clip we showed you earlier. Kujo, tell us, beyond the police, do we have any other uh, persons of authority in these communities speaking about this matter? That is another thing that the families are very concerned about. They say that nobody has been to visit them, to ask them questions, to find out uh, how they are doing, how they are faring, uh, to even gather evidence from their homes, wh which is the location from which these victims disappeared. So they consider that their homes ought to be part of the active investigation. But they say that nobody, not to the police, not the regional or district or municipal um, authorities, nobody has been uh, to see them, uh, you know, just to even find out about their well-being. Uh, they consider this to be a, a, a another sign of how little the authorities care about their plight um, in this time. Finally, Kojo, uh, when we had... Now, um... Finally, when we had uh, the DCOP... Um, Dijo, who is regional commander for the area, he, you know, sort of downplayed the feeling of fear and panic in the area. And there was a question posed to him by one journalist who attended that press briefing. He suggested that there was no need for fear and panic in the area and that these uh, girls, three girls as we know of now, who are missing, struck uh, some form of acquaintance with the suspect. Tell us what the mood in the area is and if residents have even been reacting to uh, this posture by the police. 
Now, um, I told you that I was on the phone with one of the residents while the press conference was going on. Uh, this resident reacted, uh, you know, quite sharply when the police um, commander made that comment uh, because he felt that the police commander was seeking to put uh, the blame or the responsibility on the young girls for getting kidnapped. But I think what the commander was seeking to highlight was that this operation that led to the kidnap of these three girls was something that was a long time in the making. It's not a rampant uh, spate of gra uh, snatch and grab uh, in, in the Takrade uh, municipality that people should be concerned about. He doesn't think that there is some uh, uh, wild kidnapping spree that people should be worried about. This was something that took some time to plan. And so he is not uh, too concerned about others occurring. But um, the, the uh, family members are also thinking that this could happen to someone else. If this group could plan this, it could be an ongoing initiative. There could be other girls who are currently being groomed uh, and who might disappear uh, at some point in the future. So the, the family members are, are rightly concerned um, uh, that the police perhaps uh, don't have the full picture of how dangerous this could be for others in mm. Tapra. Mm, Kojo, I know I said that was the final question, but permit me to ask where you are now. Well, I have just arrived at the home of um, Priscilla Bintu. She is the oldest of the victims, 21 years old, a university student, who disappeared all the way back in August. We're here to speak to her family members to learn about um, the circumstances under which she disappeared. Her father is here, uh, and um, I am going to be engaging him uh, to learn a little bit more about her. I don't know if you have time. Uh, if you do, he's right here with me, and we could have a, a, a quick word with him. Do have a quick word, Kujo. Okay. Hello, and... Uh... Right, you'll have to forgive us. Uh, we had a bit of a technical mishap there, but we are back on now. And this is the father of um, Priscilla Bintum. Uh, what's your name, sir? I'm from Bintum, Mr. Francis Bintum. Mr. Francis Bintum. Into Uba, Priscilla, August. And now, or you win. Chilean Mosi. You know, I have attachment to the cell. It's Friday, you know, Mokojma. Now, I'm a friend of mine. 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 I'm a Nan, may remember if you see me a fella and I'm a Miss Ankan. See never fella and I'm a Miss Ankan. See Miss Ankana, Nano, be fit in front of my men and my missus there. No fras or down, it's in the frail because all boys to me, where chapel. See me fras, what? No fras and I was there. Honorable and yelling all. You were now that time there, you asked away a camp meeting war. Tadisco down, see a coho, your coho nestle. What's over him? To me, you call the Daniel to attack crime and you call you are you, you, and I'm so that you make you see your bed and then I do. And then you are better. Yeah, yeah, and I'm watching you to see your call, a quarter cry. It's a quarter cry, and you call his big crime for you, and say, Yeah, 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 and I'm not. It's about time now, is that some local police for me? Men and Allah, the women, the men and Allah. It's a quiet police for way over them. Police for where they are used to the entire complaint. They could be, you know, now what can I say? You don't know, you 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 police <laughs> And one up, my friend may pass on up. Why you want to? No one ye Nigerian, you know, one son, someone. No one ye need him come up, who found the unsan, 
That's my co colleague Kojo Yangsen in Takrade, in home of one of the girls who's believed to have been kidnapped. He's given a translation uh, of what father of Priscilla Bentum has been telling him. Father has told us the circumstances under which she disappeared. Weekend, uh, they thought she had gone to church, but it turned out uh, that she hadn't. By the time they realized that she wasn't where she was supposed to be, uh, several hours had passed. Uh, the following morning, they then uh, reported it to the police. Uh, now, he, he has assessed the work of the police and said that he doesn't think they have done a good job. He doesn't understand how uh, the suspect managed to escape. He also thinks that since the police have been able to establish that the suspect was communicating with the victims before their abduction, that obviously means that the police has some detail of the suspect's uh, uh, knowledge of, of these abductions. And he wishes that uh, they would put aside the law that prevents the police from torturing suspects so that they would use torture to de uh, derive information from the suspect. He wishes they would do that because, uh, to his mind, if this was the child of somebody prominent in society, like the president, uh, the police would leave no stone unturned to find information from this suspect. He says that he has heard about international help. Kaliko Jayangson, they're bringing up some updates on this case. We're using the hashtag bring back our tardy girls join the conversation share your thoughts and opinions and if you have any information on the whereabouts of these young ladies do well to inform the police now the 24 surviving wives of the late iana yakubu and danny the second have all passed the traditional test which means that they do not have sex with anyone else in the time they were married to the king and the 17 years since his death Joining us was Justice Bader and Hashmin Mohammed, who covered the funeral of the late king, witnessed the traditional rites, and tell its significance in this story. A celebration of triumph, 
The 24 surviving wives of a former king carried shoulder high in pomp and pageantry. These women have just passed through the Gambia test. It means for the years they were married to Diana, they never had sex with anyone else, not even the 17 year period between his death and funeral. Men sing their praise songs for passing a crucial test and bringing honor not just to themselves, but they are generations yet unborn. Inside the Bewa Palace itself, hundreds of other women have come to send their congratulatory messages. Some of the wives are not uh, alive. Those who are alive, were, they perform it perfectly. So we are very, very happy and we thank Almighty Allah for this successful day. Behind me is the room that all the wives of the former Yana are kept all through the period of this funeral. Many of the women who are filing past me have come from all over Dagbon to show happiness with them for having passed the ritual Gambe test, which is a test to show their fidelity all through the period when they were married to the king. For the wife of a king to go through the ritual, she must have a strong heart. We got married to Yana for more than 32 years. We never did anything bad to break our marriage vow. We were his wives. He was our heavenly husband. The Gambia ritual is a critical test in Dagbon culture because every child of the Yana qualifies to ascend the throne. It is performed to ensure all babies born for the king by any of his wives is his true blood with no contamination from anyone else. There's a reason why people who have trooped in here look so happy. Because if the oracle catches you to have had sex with someone else during or after his death until the funeral had been performed, you will be shamed by the crowd with repercussions not just for yourself but generations that will come after you. Even your daughters would not get married because they would be seen as unfaithful people. He was taking good care of us. We were also faithful and gracious, and he also demonstrated same love to us. We dedicate the Gamiye ritual to his blessed memory. May Allah bless and show his infinite grace on our children. With the funeral over and a new Yana in place, they are free to marry again if they want. But many of them told me they still cherish memories of good times with their only love and Dagbon's slain kin, and so would stay single in his memory. Justice Beidou and Hashmin Mohammed in Yendi for Joy News. Very interesting report there. You're watching Join News today with me, Benis Abubeidulansa. Coming up in business, General Secretary of the Mine Workers Union assures workers of the newly reopened Anglo Gold Ashanti Opoase mine that they'll cooperate to ensure efficiency. Do stay for details. <laughs>